Hello! Welcome back to my channel. It's me, Amanda. Um, thanks for watching this video. Today we're going to talk about my experience raising a service dog. I had a golden retriever lab puppy that I raised to become a service dog for autism. and she graduates tomorrow and she's officially with her boy. So I'm gonna talk about the ups, the downs, what I did, what she did, how she did, and just my experience with it. So let's do it. When I decided I wanted to raise a service dog, I told my parents, told Nick, my boyfriend, and a couple friends, and my parents were like, yo, you know, that's kind of a lot. You're going through nursing school. You need to just focus on that don't raise a service dog. If you know me, you know that I will never do what you tell me to do. And if you tell me no, I'm going to do it. And if you tell me I can't do something, I'm going to prove you wrong. So my parents said no. I said yes. So I went on and I applied to be a primary foster through the university program at a company called Four Paws for Ability out of Xenia, Ohio. And I probably applied mid-December. And with the holidays and everything, I didn't hear back right away. So I followed up with an email and I was like, hey, I haven't really heard anything. Did you get my application? Do you know when I'll be able to start? And they said, you know, we'll email you when we can. We're reviewing applications. So I waited and I was approved and I had to attend a two hour long orientation. And at the time they didn't have any dogs to send out. So I was only going to this orientation just so when a dog did become available, I could take them. And it was something required by anybody that was gonna be a sitter or a primary foster. You had to take this orientation where you learn about the dogs and the company and the do's and don'ts of raising a service dog. So that class was January 4th, 2019. And because it was winter break, working at home at the time, and I told my parents that I was going back down to school to celebrate a couple friends' birthdays. They were having a joint birthday party, which was true. So I said I was gonna be gone that weekend and they were totally cool with it. But what they didn't know is that I was going to this orientation and just before I left, they had emailed me that they had puppies available and that I was getting one. So I had a really big secret and I was keeping it from them, but I was so excited. So January 4th comes along and I go down to school. It's four and a half hours usually. I didn't tell them I was stopping anywhere. So when my mom didn't hear from me, until six hours later, and I said that I finally made it, she goes, well, what were you doing? Why did it take you so long? And I didn't respond to her while I was in the class because I was learning and I couldn't. So she's, where are you? Did you make it yet? And I'm radio silent. So she texts Nick, hey, where's Amanda? Have you heard from her? Did she make it? And he knew exactly what I was doing because I told him, but he didn't want to be the one to break the news. So he just said, oh yeah, she's like, she's on her way. So I'm super sketchy. I text my mom that I made it. She's calling me. Why did it take you so long? And I said, don't worry about it. Like it just took me a while. I hit traffic. She goes, you didn't hit two hours worth of traffic. What were you doing? So I didn't say anything. My parents were worried, which rightfully so, but I still didn't tell them. And that night, I took a picture of little Parm on my bed. And I said, this is the reason why it took me six and a half hours to get to Cincinnati today. And my mom replied, I knew something was up when it took you so long. I had no idea you were doing this, but oh my gosh, is she cute. And she was. And just like that, my parents fell in love with her. And it was one of those ask for forgiveness, not for permission things. 
which I also kind of knew from my brother because he got his puppy without telling our parents and they fell in love with her instantly. So I went on that side of things and it worked for me. So I had Parma. She was three months old. Yeah, three months. She was at a prison before I had her. So the inmates were training her and she was teaching them patience and they were teaching her how to go potty and little commands like sit. So she wasn't fully potty trained when I got her. So I worked with her on that. I worked with her on little commands, sit, lay down, stuff like that. We played and that's where our journey began. So she, once classes started again, she went to all my classes with me when she was fully vaccinated and allowed to. She came to all my nursing classes. She went to the grocery store with me. She went to the movies with me. She went to the mall with me. Anywhere that I went, she came with me. And that was my job as the primary foster. I was to take her socializing anywhere and everywhere. I could get her, get her used to animals, get her used to sounds, get her used to sights, scents, everything. And teach her the command and things that they were teaching in our training classes that we had. So we were required to do obedience classes once a month with our dogs and you drove to Xenia for them and you would be in a group and there would be trainers and they would teach you a new skill or a new command or you know whatever it was and you would practice and then you would go home and then you would continue teaching your dog that. So that was once a month and then every week we were required to fill out online a sheet just saying like where we took our dog how they did do they have accidents did they bark did they jump on people were they well behaved and then just like little comments about that stuff really not hard and then once a month we had to fill out our monthly sheet where again where you took them how they did when you groomed them when they had their meds that kind of stuff and so that's really all I did the whole time was just monthly classes, working with her every day with it, taking her everywhere that I went. So she turns six months old and really she was almost seven months at the time. And we were at Nick's house. It was April 6th and we were sleeping and when we woke up, Nick's mom told us, I think Parma's hurt. And my heart dropped. You know, that's my fur baby. That is my quote unquote child right now. And so I was like, oh, what happened? And she said that she was trying to jump up onto Nick's mom's bed. And because she was still little, Nick's mom's bed is higher than most beds. Like I still have to use a step stool to get onto it. And I'm 5'8". So I use a step stool. So it's really high and she's this little six month old puppy and she tried to jump it up and she didn't make it and she fell off and she hurt her leg. So I immediately go and see her. She won't get up. She's just laying there. I'm touching her leg. It was her back left leg. I'm touching it. I'm moving it. She doesn't care. She's not biting. She's not crying. She seems okay. So I called the four paws hotline and I told them what happened, what should I do? And they said, just rest her, it's probably soft tissue, see how she does in the next few days. Well, I knew that something was probably wrong. Like we would, I had to pick her up to take her outside to go to the bathroom. And when I did, she would pee and then she would just lay down and she wouldn't move from there. So I knew, and that's not her. She is energetic as could be loves to run, loves to play. She doesn't just lay there. So I told them I would be more comfortable bringing her in so that the vet can see her as soon as the vet comes in. This was a weekend, I want to say. So on Monday, I want the vet to take a look at her. So the vet did and they sent her out for x-rays and turns out she broke her leg at the growth plate, unfortunately, and it required surgery. So she had to stay there for a while and she went to med vet. She had the surgery done. They put some pins and rods in her leg 
and she did fine. She recovered. I finally got to have her back. I nursed her back to health. I, she had to stay at Four Paws while she was healing, but I would go and visit her every week. Nick and I would go. We would send videos to all our friends and family. We would FaceTime them with her, but we were always there. As soon as we could be, as long as we could be, we would go and visit her. We would get her out. We would walk her around so she could move her leg, rehab her. And then as soon as they cleared her, she came back with us. So we nursed her back and she was doing the same old thing. And in the summer, she was swimming, having fun in pools and everything. And she got hot spots, which if you don't know what hot spots are, they're really gross. But, you know, it's okay. They can come at any point and any time. I think hers were from when she went swimming and the moisture just got under her ears and stayed there and bacteria got into it. But basically, I was petting her one night and I was like, mm, under her ears a little, like, wet. Did she get wet? Whatever. And I, like, flipped up her ear and there was, like, some goopiness. And I was like, oh, maybe she has an ear infection because it kind of smelled weird. I know it's really gross, I'm sorry, but it kind of smelled gross. And I had Nick look at it and we were like, okay, yeah, it's probably just an ear infection. So we called Four Paws and they had an appointment set up for her, for the vet. And I had to work that day. So Nick took her and he calls me and he goes, everything's okay. She has hot spots. They had to shave her neck and ears and we just have to like air them out. We have to use chlorhexidine wipes on her, antibiotics, you know, the whole shebang. And when I saw the pictures of what actually was going on, oh my God, like gross, first of all, painful. I felt so bad. I can put the pictures right here. So yeah, really, really bad to the point that they were bleeding. And so we did the chlorhexidine wipes, we did the medication and it took a few weeks, but we finally got that under control too. But I mean, we had to wear rubber gloves when we were cleaning. Nick or I would have to stand there and let her just lick a jar of peanut butter while we were cleaning them because obviously it hurts. She doesn't want you touching them. She had to wear a cone so she wouldn't scratch or pick at them. And she just seemed miserable for so long. And she finally got better and that was fine. And she got heat. So when she went into heat, unfortunately it happened to be at the time that Nick and I were going to Mexico. She got it right when we were about to leave. So my parents were babysitting her and they had to deal with it. And I'm so sorry to them, but I'm also so thankful that they helped. But she wore diapers, she was miserable, she whined, she just wanted to lay around all day, which I get it. I get it, girl. But I felt awful for her. She could not catch a break for anything, it seemed. And she finally got through that and she was totally cool. And she rocked it. She had her evaluation in October to see where she was at, if she could go to advanced training. And so they take them to the mall, they do temperament tests, see how they do in public in different settings. And they have people dress up in disguises, see if the dogs are triggered by it, if they growl, if they bark, if they attack, whatever. So she passed and she went on to advanced training. We threw her this huge going away party. We made her a puppy free, or sorry, puppy friendly cake with peanut butter in it. And all our friends came and we all had this huge send off to her. And my mom came down and helped me return her because Nick had to work. So I was a mess. It was really, really heart wrenching for me, but we made it through and she went to advanced training and she was matched with a boy. And I got the notification on Thanksgiving that she was officially matched and they had used her as a tracking dog. So at Four Paws, 
You can be a tracking dog, military dog. Um, they have a whole bunch of like different options of service dogs that they provide. Well, she was a tracking dog and I pretty much always knew that she would be because she sniffs everything and she can find anything. You could hide treats under blankets, pillows, under a bed, and she knows exactly where they are. So I knew she would probably be a tracking dog, which she was. And she was assigned a little boy and they, I guess, found out that she was limping again. So the family wasn't comfortable taking her home because they thought she might need another surgery to remove the rods and pins in her leg. So she didn't go home with that boy and they did the surgery to take out her pins. So after that surgery, she went back to advanced training and was working and quarantine hit. And I got to take her home with me during quarantine. I had to leave my apartment at school and I went home home and she came with me and we had a wonderful time from like March until the end of June when I moved back down to start my job and to study for the NCLEX. So I dropped her off on my way down to school and that was end of June and then like early, early August, I got the notification that she was matched again. So I was ecstatic and she's an autism dog. So she's trained in tethering. So she like pulls back on the kid when they like try to pull her off or they try to leave. She'll like pull back on them, bring them back. She is trained in tracking. So if the kid, she has a boy. So if her boy goes wandering off and gets lost, they will say, Parma, find your boy. And she goes into tracking mode and she sniffs the ground, starts pretty wide. So she sniff, sniff, ugh, words, right? Sniffing this way, this way, this way, this way. And then she narrows her path when she gets the scent and she sniffs him out and she finds it. And they throw this huge party because she found him. And so that's how they train him. So she's trained in that and then she's also trained in behavior modification. So with autism, they do a lot of repetitive movements. Some might headbang, some might, I don't know, clap their hands. Some, there's just like a lot of things that they can do and some can be very dangerous. So she's trained to intervene when her boy does those behaviors. She like calms them down, gets in the way, protects them. So she's trained for that too. And so she finally was matched and I reached out to the family and we were going back and forth on Facebook Messenger and I really, really liked them. And they came down, they're from New York. They came down to learn how to utilize her skills. And they work with the trainers for two weeks before the dogs graduate. They have a graduation for them. And the trainers teach them how to use the service dog and what to say and what to look for and stuff like that so they've been doing that for the past two weeks and i got to meet them today i drove to their airbnb where they were staying and talked to them i made them this cute little scrapbook of parma's pictures from when she was younger so that they could catch up on her and have those and so i met them i talked to them shared my story with them they shared their story with me they asked me questions about parma and I loved them. They were the sweetest people ever. They were so grateful. They were so thankful and just incredible people. And I couldn't have picked a better match for her. They call her Gigi because the little boy cannot say Parma. So they have changed her name to Gigi, which is fine with me and very fitting as it means your best friend. So and she will be. She will be that little boy's best friend and keep him safe for the rest of her life. And I cannot be more proud of her. She rocked it. She overcame so many odds that a lot of people didn't think she was going to make it to this point. And she showed them wrong. And that's my girl. You know, that's what I do. And I'm beyond proud of her. And she graduates tomorrow. Friday, August 21st is her graduation. And then Saturday she leaves with the family to go back to New York. So I'm very proud of her. I'm so glad that I did this and it was beyond rewarding. You know, I got the best dog out of it. 
a family is getting their life back and feeling safe with their child and are just so grateful for it. So I made an impact in these people's lives and I'm proud of myself, I'm proud of her and if I had to do it all over again, I 100% would. It's hard to give them back, it's very emotional as you become so attached with them, you know, they're literally with you 24 seven. So it was hard, but I just had to keep reminding myself, you know, this is what she's meant for. She's destined to do this. Somebody needs her far more than I do as a pet. Somebody needs her to save their life and keep them safe. So it's so rewarding and I'm so glad that I did it. And if you're going back and forth with the idea of doing it, do it. You won't regret it. It's the most amazing experience and so rewarding and you get a lifelong friend and you get to help a family who really, really needs it. So do it. And I'm so thankful that I did. So thank you for watching this video. That's all I have. Um, please subscribe to my channel. Give this video a thumbs up. Follow me on Instagram. I'll post it here and I will see you guys next time. Take care. Thank you.